So first of all, hats off and shout out to Terry Darts for writing all this code. Uh, I could not get it to work the way that he had it. So I kind of just scrapped some of the code and kept the part that gave me the variables that I need. So this is how I set up heat. You're going to go here. You're going to add a WebSocket client. And I'll have this cover pasted below. You're going to put this. And let's put the heat map. Okay. And then you're going to go over to viewers. And get your little number here. Copy that. Okay. Back over here. And put it right there. Okay. Auto connect. And I'll link that in a second. Come back to actions. And import. And this code is also going to be below. And you're going to put it right here. And it should give you these two. So this WebSocket refresh uh, action is to just reset the WebSocket client. Okay. And the way I have that set up is uh, I go to a timer. And I just hit heat reset. And I'm going to set that for 40 seconds. And just do this. That way every 40 seconds it'll reset the WebSocket client in case it shut itself down or whatever. That happens to me a lot. I don't know if other people have that issue, but this is just to keep, make sure that it keeps flowing. Otherwise it could be off for 20 minutes and I'd never even know. And then you come up to heat message here. You change your width and your height to what your canvas is. Mine is 1920 by 1080. And you should, you can pretty much just leave all this the way it is. And this is just a random uh, the action I put in here just so you can test it. And it should be uh, pretty much good to go once you go here and link the message with your WebSocket client. Okay, that's pretty much it. And now once I go live, I should be able to uh, click and then have it say click, click. Hopefully. All right, let's see. Click, click. Click, click. So anywhere I click on the screen is going to trigger that. Okay. So that works for just a single action. Anytime, anywhere, anywhere on that screen gets clicked, it's going to trigger this. So it seems how there's just one thing here and nothing else. It's just going to trigger whatever you put here. And I'm pretty sure you could just go here and uh, link it to any other action or pretty much channel point you wanted to. Pretty easy. But if you want to get more complicated than that, this is where I have the other one. Again, post it down below. Now this one will give you a little more actions. This is uh this is a, and just to have this set up, you come back over here, go to the heat map, and then set it to the new heat for locations. Now this one is set up like a grid. Just have that grid over here. Can't put myself on top here. There we go. So I have this one divided up into a grid. So instead of just going click, click down here at the bottom, you can see that it says if target X is greater than 960, going side to side here, if it's bigger than 960, that's this area. That means do the Y variable too, which is the up and down column for over here. So if it's greater than 540, right here in this four, It'll say, it'll go to the test message four, which is you clicked in square four and the speaker bot's gonna say you clicked in square four. If you were to not be over 960, then it's gonna go to the next one, which is below that, which is, you know, it says greater than zero. So that one's gonna be on that side. And that's gonna trigger this one, which is the first column. So if it's uh, greater than 540, then it's gonna be that two over there, yeah? But if it's less than 540, then it's going to be the one. It's it's a it's a little it's a little complicated and a little messy. But once you start working with it, you can kind of make up your own grid yourself and have your own areas and you know do as you please. But just to go ahead and test, I'm going to start streaming again just to see if these work. Gonna go ahead and click on the three. Clicked in square three. One. Clicked in square one. Two. Clicked in square two. Two. Oh, I clicked it again. There you go. 
Clifton Square 2 Clifton Square 4 All right, so that is how you can kind of set it up just as a simple uh, two by two grid. Or you can obviously, uh, you can get more complex with it, which um, you can see up there, the buttons I have up there, you can click each one of them, they'll do a different thing. And the arrows will also change the command that's, uh, or the, the little face right there, so that it'll, uh, you know, do different stuff. But in order for that to work, I have to kind of close this and open up my other streamer bot. So, give me a second. Okay, so if you, uh, so on mine over here, my heat message is a little more complicated. Oopsie. So I have uh, several different coordinates on here that, that separate each one of these buttons with little gaps in between. Because I don't want when you click in between the thing that it does something. I'd rather, you know, they're actually separated by a gap. That's why you have this little does nothing, then column one. Does nothing, column two. Does nothing, column three. And then, you know, depending on where you click, it's going to send you to the columns, which is going to send you to another list of the target Ys, which is going to send you uh, to all the different buttons. And I can show you right now that all of these work. I think most of them work. Some are messed up. <laughs> Let's go! GG! You do you. So you can really get a, you know, super messy with it. Obviously I got a whole mess of stuff here, but you get it. And by the way, if you're curious where I'm getting this target X and target Y from, this is from Terry Dart's code. You know, I rummaged through this because I couldn't get it to work, and eventually I found this down here, target X, target Y, where it looks like, oh, that's the coordinate. So that's where I'm getting this information. Another important thing that you know, to note with this is that if target X is greater the 917, I want it to do this. I mean, obviously it says nothing, but uh, you want to have your higher numbers, if it's greater than, at the top going lower. And if you want uh, less than, you want them going low to top. The reason that's important is because, say, target X is 500. That means you want it to hit this area, right? You don't want it to hit this because it's not. However, if this is lower down here, 500 is also greater than 359. It's not just greater than 469. It's greater than all these, actually, right? But you don't want it to go to these because these have separate things. So if you have it not in the right order, it's going to trigger the wrong things. So that's, a, that's something that's important to note if you're going to do a grid like this. But uh, I don't know. I think that's pretty much it. But that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll try to leave all the information down there so you don't have to go anywhere else to get it. Um, I don't know how to code. I don't know how to do this stuff. This is just the way that I got it to work. So good luck.